Hello, everyone. On behalf of our team here at Legi Partners, I'd like to welcome you to our webcast and live product demonstration. I'm Chad Collette. I'm the director of marketing here at Legi Partners, and uh, you know, thanks for taking the time out of your schedule to to learn about customer relationship management, or is better known as uh, CRM, and the product that we've custom designed and developed for the oil and gas and lubricant marketers. Uh, really looking at this product and, and kickstarting your your 2015. It's it's hard to believe that 2015 is here already. For today's webcast, to achieve the best audio quality for everyone, uh, all attendees are in listen-only mode. If you have questions during the webcast, you know we really encourage you to submit them in the question pane uh, in your GoToWebinar toolbar in the lower corner, and we'll try our best to kind of answer some of those along the way. Uh, Steve, our presenter, has a ton of information to cover today, so if for some reason we do not get to your question, you know, we will definitely follow up with you and make sure that gets answered. Uh, and, or if there is time, we'll leave some for the end. But as you have those questions, feel free to type those in. Uh, additionally, I want to let you know that today's webinar is being recorded, and we'll make that available to everyone later today. So once we get done, uh, you'll be expecting a, an email from me uh, hitting your inbox, you know, within the first couple hours. So before I introduce our main presenter, I'd like to share a little bit with you about Legi Partners. Uh, for those of you that are, are unfamiliar with Legio, we're a, a full-service uh, CRM consulting partner, and we deal with Microsoft Dynamics CRM, of which we're a gold partner, and we also work with Salesforce, and we're a Cloud Alliance partner with Salesforce. Been around for the last seven years. Everyone here is certified, and one of our specialties is definitely the oil and gas industry, for those of you that have seen the product before. Uh, you know, Ledgeview, we deal with a lot of industries. We cover about, you know, industries ranging from professional services and manufacturing to finance to education. Uh, in addition to the oil and gas industry, we've got 300 plus customers uh, across multiple industries. We're covering 45 states and provinces and branch out to three countries. And, you know, we're really closing in on nearly a thousand CRM projects lifetime. Uh, but really the best kind of stat on this slide that you might see that we're super proud of is our 98% customer retention rate. For us, it's not about you know just doing a project being done. It's about building a long-term relationship. You know, focusing on that R of the CRM. So you know, to get to it, I'd like to introduce Steve Raybrock from Ledview Partners. Steve's a product consultant here and leads all of our oil and gas product implementations for Ledview. Every single one of them. With nearly 30 years of experience in the oil and gas industry. Steve leads our developmental team that continues to enhance the CRM product that he's going to show you. And a lot of these features he's showing you uh, come from oil and gas marketers like yourselves who have used the product, given us enhancements, and continue to make it better. So Steve, I know you've got a ton of information, so uh, take it away. All right. Thanks, Chad. I see a full block of attendees as well. Uh, some of the names look familiar, so we have a few of our current customers on the call as well. So that's good. Welcome, everyone. Um, I'm just going to flip over to the agenda here. And the first three points I'm just going to talk about, and I'm not going to talk long on those points. And the last bullet is actually just jumping into our oil and gas uh, product. So I want to actually spend as much time as possible showing you stuff. But before I do that, it's important to set the right foundation. So for those of you new to CRM, you know, the first, first bullet here, you know, what can CRM do for you, for your organization? Um, a lot of that, an I'll answer that when we actually get to the, the basics of CRM. They kind of go hand in hand. So CRM will, will help your sales team, your marketing team, and your service team. You know, and how will, how will it do that? Well, one of the things that I hear come up quite a bit when I'm done with a project and a customer is using CRM, well, here's the word consistency. We're finally doing something the same across the organization. Um, also, I hear the word transparency. You know, the data is in a system. It's in a, it's in a consistent format, easy to get at. So management, salespeople, marketing people can get at information uh, easily. And so what does all that mean? Transparency and consistency leads to efficiency. So. Customer relationship management is going to hopefully make your organization much more efficient. Um, just one example of that, um, to kind of keep track of communication with your clients, 
um, if you happen to be an, an Outlook user, you can track emails from your Outlook right in CRM. So you get a, a critical email from somebody, you want to you save that information, tie it to a customer with a couple clicks, you can get that in CRM, and now it stays there linked to that account, and everyone has access to it. It's not just buried in a personal folder you know, in, your, in your inbox, so to speak, or in a personal folder in your Outlook. So um, talk a lot about sales, because that's where I spend a lot of my time, and you'll see a lot of how a sales team might use CRM with our oil and gas products, but I, I don't want to slight the marketing and service area, because if you have a marketing department or even one person and they're running marketing campaigns, CRM has that capability um, along with a service module. Um, we happen to use the service module when folks call us, our support desk, we log a case in CRM in the service module, and then we can track that against a particular user, uh, against a particular customer, and then we have all that historical data. So that's a little bit about what customer relationship management is and what it can do for your company and even some of the basics. Um, another thing that's important is to really understand the difference between what we call like a vanilla product or vanilla CRM and an industry-ready product. And, and if you're still analyzing CRM and, you know, should you buy, what should you buy, that's one of your key decision points right there. If you buy vanilla CRM, you get just that basic functionality right out of the box, all the stuff I talked about, sales, marketing, service. But if you want any enhancements done to it, any changes to work specific for you, any tie-in to your back office, any of that, you're going to have to, number one, design that, and number two, either develop it yourself or pay a consulting firm to do that. So the good news about starting with vanilla is ultimately you get exactly what you want because you started with a base product and you customized it exactly to what you want. The negative is you're highly involved with that process, meaning there's a lot of time invested and also a lot of money. Right? You're paying somebody to help you um, create this thing. So the difference between that and an industry-ready product is hopefully you can find a CRM out there that is designed for your industry and it meets, let's say, 95, 98% of your needs and it's done already. So that's what we did with our oil and gas product. We uh, got feedback from many marketers, um, suppliers, um, I happen to have a little over 28 years of, of experience working for an oil company, so I'll use some of my uh, background, and we've developed this product that I'm about to demonstrate. And so the thing is, if, it, if it's like 95, 98% of what you want, why start from scratch and develop and spend all that time and all that money when something's already been invented? So that's a little background on uh, some of the basics with CRM and how you might have gotten to this point. I'm just going to click to the next slide and just give you a, a quick look at the four topics uh, we decided on for today. Um, these are probably the biggies, but there's, there's a lot more in our product than I can show you in the next uh, 40, 45 minutes here. So data visualization is the first one I'm going to cover, and that's just... Um, one of the things that we believe in is tying in to your back office, your accounting system. I kind of refer to that as your Bible. That's where all your valuable information is. But what I hear from a lot of clients is a lot of folks in the organization don't have access to that data. Well, why not bring that data to life in CRM in a tool that you can give to your marketing team, your sales team, an easy-to-use tool to get at this data. So we're going to spend quite a bit of time talking about data visualization, and uh, you know how you can see your back office data right within CRM. For those of you on the call who are a little bit more technical and are wondering, you know, how do we do that? That's probably a side conversation we can have with you. I, I think um, toward the end of the presentation, we'll uh, give you some contact information, and we can do a, a deep dive with you individually. Um, ultimately, we need the data from your system converted into uh, a few CSV files, very simple uh, comma-separated files. And they come to us every night, and we put that data into your CRM. So that's at a real high level how that works. And then we're going to talk about sales team transparency. I think I talked about transparency on the, on the prior slide. You know, and what does that mean, and you know, how can you use that um, in CRM? 
We'll spend a little bit of time on quotes. That's an optional feature if you want to, again, be consistent. CRM has a consistent looking quote that you can uh, generate to send out to your clients. So again, everybody's doing it the same way. I would say about 75 or 80% of my clients take advantage of that feature. Um, equipment tracking is a big one uh, for uh, the oil and gas customers because there's so many loaned, I'll say loaned equipment or loaned tanks out there to try to keep track of them is a little bit difficult. So we've got a module um, for that. And it doesn't even have to be tanks. You can actually track you know, just about anything, any, any piece of equipment you want. All right, then we'll also spend a little bit of time talking about station management. That's really just the way if you happen to either service or own some gas stations or convenience stores or even uh, um, card lock locations, you can set that up in CRM and I'll show you that and talk about why you, know, you might want to do that. And we'll briefly spend a little time on our fuel price notification module for those of you who not only do lubricant but if you do fuel, obviously the prices change every day. There's a very simple process we have to get your name and your prices out to the right people, you know, with uh, just a few minutes each morning um, to get that information out to them. So we'll talk about that. Then we'll uh, uh, hit one of our dashboards called Territory Management, a little mapping tool that's especially nice for uh, new folks to your organization and also uh, folks who just want to see how things end up showing up on a map. So you can put your accounts, you know, on a map and see where they play out. If you're going to go visit a customer, you can see who else is in that area. Maybe visit them, you know, on the same trip. And then hopefully, I still have about 10 or 15 minutes at the end of this to uh, show our iPad app which is the way you can access our CRM um, through a mobile device. And, and we just picked the iPad, again, based on feedback from our clients. We started doing it on, on phones, and those were just too small. And our clients just said, nope, we want something a little bit bigger. Um, and by, uh, by a long shot, um, the iPad was the most popular option. So we developed probably 95% of what a salesperson needs to do in the field they can do offline on an iPad. So I've heard the word game changer said a couple times from a couple of my clients. Once we rolled that out, how much more efficient that made their sales team. So that's it. That's what I'm going to get into. So let's actually get started here. I'm going to uh, close all that and jump over to CRM. So just to double check with Chad, if you're still on uh, unmuted here, Chad, uh, did the screen change over to CRM? Yes, it did, Steve. All right, great. So everybody's seeing that, so we're good. Okay, so the first item, trans, uh, data, data visualization. So what does that mean? So what you're seeing on this first screen is, I would say most of it is basic CRM. It's simply a list of my accounts, right? And there's options on here to run filters and searches and find your data. Um, I'm actually going to search for an account that I know happens to have some data. So I'm just going to pull up this account and show you some of the things that you'll be able to do with our oil and gas product, your customers, and your data. And one of the things that seems to come, out, uh, come up quite a bit is you know, how much is this customer buying? When's the last time he bought? How much did he pay? And many times I hear those types of questions have to get called into the office. Well, if I'm a salesperson using CRM and I'm about to visit this customer, I can just pull up the screen and very easily find all the information in CRM that's related to this account. And one of the things is what we call order history, which uh, another way to look at that is is just your invoice data. So what this ends up being is every line item on an invoice for this customer. So the bad news is, you know, the last time this customer purchased something was back in 2014. Well, the good news is this is just a little test world, and, and my uh, test day is about a year old. So anyway, these are all the transactions this customer had with me. It shows me the order number, which could be your invoice number. Um, the product segment they purchased, the, the specific product description, and the product ID. So this is what they bought. And I did realize when I loaded my data, I reversed the pricing cost. So don't be alarmed with these numbers because we're losing money and we, we shouldn't be. So pricing cost will come right from your system. 
how many did they buy, how much revenue did it produce, and how much gross profit did, did this transaction produce. So very easy, quick way to get that information at, at about as granular level as you can. You know, what, what did somebody buy, and you know, when's the last time they bought it, pricing, all that kind of good stuff. So another thing that, um, that we've done, and again, this, this particular customer hasn't purchased for a while, but some folks are a little bit more graphical than others, so we show you that information graphically. So I'm going to, I'm actually going to have to refresh my browser here real quick. Let me just quick do that. Had too many things going on before I started this uh, webinar, so I apologize for that. So we have a dashboard where you can actually look at somebody's order history um, with basically some charts. So what this is showing me is so far this year, so year to date, how much gross profit, I'm sorry, that's this column, how much gross profit have they contributed, and last year, year to date, how much did they contribute? So obviously, you know, they contributed a lot last year and not very much this year, obviously none. Um, I actually know it's, it's very early in our fiscal year because our, our system is set up for calendar year, so there wouldn't have been very much in here anyway. So we also have a chart that compares the rolling 12 months. So ultimately what this looks at is the, the current 12 months versus the prior 12 months. And I still obviously big red flag, right? 12 to, you know, a year ago he was buying lots. In the last 12 months, nothing. We also break down that information by what we call product segment. So you can see this current year versus prior year, you know, in this case by antifreeze, grease, heavy duty, industrial. These would be your product segments. So we configure the system to look and feel just like, you know, your company talks and analyzes data. And then you can also look at, at this uh, data a number of different ways. You know, I could click on the units tab and it's the same chart, but it's showing me volume instead of gross profit. So that's another way we, you know, you visualize your data, basically turning data into information. So that's more at the account level. I'm going to jump into more at a, at a corporate level. So another thing that, that you can do is we have a, a dashboard out here that we call our corporate goal scorecard. <clears throat> and that does actually two things. It accumulates all of that data and again, I don't have much in for this year, so I'm going to jump to last year. It accumulates all of that data for all your customers and shows how your organization is doing. And again, I'm, I'm looking at just my last year's data here. Um, so what this does is it's showing me overall for all my customers how much gross profit have I earned. And then over here, this is showing me volume. And then these diamonds are optional. If you set goals, then these quarterly these quarterly goals which are the four diamonds will show up on these charts so I can see if this is truly all of last year you know I had a terrible year compared to my goal you know if I was three months into the current year and that's where I was at you know, I'd be right on track so this bar you get automatically just by using our CRM tying into your back office that just gets built the goals you have to actually go in once a year you fill out a spreadsheet with your goals and then there's the wizard to load them goals into CRM, and then it populates these charts with these diamonds. And then what you can do is you can drill into this number here if I wanted to. So I could drill into the company number, and then what you're going to see is a breakdown by department. Now, these are just some departments I have in my system. These would be what, what your profit centers or divisions or departments are. We just happen to call it department, but these would be yours. So now I could even drill on lubric, drill into lubricants, and then it would show me, and I don't know if you noticed, but there's both set at each of these. Now I got kind of lazy here, and I have the exact same goal for each product segment. Um, so that probably won't happen in the real world. But this is showing me actual versus goals for gross profit for my lubricants department broken down by product segment. And again, we work with you to get your product segments loaded and get all this data from your back office into CRM. And then obviously we've got to get our goals loaded. If I wanted to go one step further, I could drill, let's say, into this heavy duty. And my last breakdown then is by salesperson. So now I'm looking at how each salesperson is doing on their heavy duty lubricants business. 
and then I can go one step further. I don't get a chart out of this, but I get you know a kind of a cool list. This is going to list. I think I clicked on Steve. This is going to list all of Steve's accounts. If it comes up here, there we go. I think I, I shouldn't have picked me. I probably have just about every single account in my little test world there. So what it's going to do is it's going to list every single one of my customers and show how they are contributing to the was it the heavy duty lubricants business. So here we go. It's uh, gross profit lubricants heavy duty, and it's still not coming up with the list. We'll give it one more second here. Okay, I guess we're not going to see that one today. Could try one more time. Let's just click on Lisa. She has left the comment. See if that goes a little bit quicker. Yeah, so anyway, you get a list of customers, and then you get the actual how much they contributed to the goal. So. Okay, um, last thing I'll show you from a, um, a data visualization, and there are lots more that I'm showing you, but just to kind of give you an idea of how we bring a lot of your information to life in CRM, um, is in reports. So we have a lot of reports where you may want to analyze you know, a lot of customers, maybe just one salesman's customers, maybe an industry, maybe a department. So just as an example, one of our, one of our kind of popular reports is this ranking report. You know, I get asked quite a bit, is there a way for me to get a list of my top 80% of my customers? So what you can do, and many of our reports start with this filter screen, so I can filter, basically narrow down the data I'm analyzing based on any field in the account file and any field in the order history file. So once you get used to CRM and what's in, the, what's in these files, you know the account file has things like industry, owner, you know, ship state. Uh, last order date, all kinds of good stuff that you could decide if you want to filter on. So I could filter on just one salesman if I wanted to. Order history has things like, you know, what department got credit for the sale, what was the product, what was the product segment, um, what was the order date. So maybe in this example, I'll just say something like, I want to rank my customers, but I want to look at all the activity on or after 1-1-2014. And I want to look at Every customer, I, you know, I, I could filter it by owner, which would be like salesperson, but I'll just leave all of them alone, and then I'll just click to run the report. And when I do that, some reports jump right into actually generating a report, but some of our reports actually have a few follow-up questions before it actually runs. And this particular one has one question, and that is, how do you want to rank your customers? Do you want to rank them by gross profit, revenue, or volume? Well, I'll just go with gross profit, and then I'll click this view report button, and then it will go out there, and I probably should have maybe picked a shorter time period, but it's going out and it's looking at all the customers in the system, it's looking at all the order history, so every invoice, every transaction from January 1st, 2014 on, and it's accumulating all that. And then it's going to sort it by customer with customer with the highest gross profit down to the customer with the least gross profit. So here's just some made up customers and addresses, so basic information, the last time they ordered. And over that time period, here's how much gross profit each of these customers contributed. So you can see the number is going down, right? Each, it's descending by gross profit. And then here's the percentage that each of those customers contributed. And then here's a running percent. So again, I think the, the thought was, look, I want to see my top 80%. Well, this report is going to give you everybody. You can just stop reading when you get down to 80%. So I'll just scroll down. The first page of the report gives me about 38% of my gross profit. And I could just go to page two, page three, page four, and just analyze my customers. You know, if I wanted to do you know, more analysis on this than, than what I'm able to hear, I could always export this to Excel and do whatever I wanted with it. Then once you have the data in Excel, right, then it's all yours. So just another way of you know, visualizing data in CRM. And there's lots of different reports, comparison reports, analyzing the salesperson, analyzing products. 
This is looking at your products, and again, that order history data, looking at like 13 months, so you can analyze trends for a particular customer, um, variance reports, on and on and on. All right, looking at my podcast, I'm up right on schedule. So I'm moving on from data visualization. Before I do, I know I've been talking for quite a bit here. Chad, has uh, have any questions come in that uh, require me to answer or show something, or am I good to keep going? You can keep rolling, Steve, doing a good job. Okay. Okay, moving on then, we talked about sales team transparency. So how again can we make this data transparent to everybody? Well, we talked about from a corporate perspective how we could analyze you know, how the company's doing from a gross profit perspective, and we drilled into that. Well, how does that help a sales manager kind of easily see at a high level how his sales team is doing? Well, there's another dashboard for a sales manager and what he can do is he can pick one salesman or, or leave all of them. He can pick this year, last year, I'll pick last year again, and say just show me that on a dashboard. And what this does is it's going gonna, it's gonna to use the same data I was showing you before, but it's starting out at the salesperson level. So at a real high level, these are my salesperson's overall goals and how they're doing. And then I could drill into these, and, and then we get into kind of that same drill down, right? We drill down, and then we get to department, and then product segment, and on and on and on. The, the point here that I'm trying to make is, as a sales manager, you can see this, and let's say I only wanted to, I had a meeting with uh, Lisa. I could go in, and, you know, Lisa's in my office. I pull up Lisa's dashboard and we start talking about, you know, goals versus actual and, you know, what can we do to help improve the numbers, yada, yada, yada. But the good news is there's another dashboard, actually it's called Dashboard 8, which is called, you know, My Goals Dashboard. So if Lisa is using the system, she's a salesperson, when Lisa goes into Dashboard 8, this is what she sees. She, she only has access to her information. So again, everything is transparent, right? If you can see it, sales manager can see it, sales team can see it. We want everybody to be able to see the same information so it's just very clear. Everybody's getting the same same story. Um, what's another way to kind of you know use that word transparency? I hear this quite a bit in our um, opportunities. I mean, that's a very big thing with CRM to manage your pipeline, manage your opportunities. Well, how can I as a manager you know, know what's going on out there without having to have a lot of one-on-one -on -one meetings, a lot of sales meetings to ask everybody what's in the pipeline. Well, I should be able to just go into CRM. Because if everybody's using the process and using CRM, it should all be right in front of me as a manager. So this is just one of our dashboards. It's actually analyzing all the opportunities in the system, the open ones, and it's analyzing gross profit. So this just happens to be, this first chart is showing me how much gross profit is in my pipeline by department. So maybe not critical, but kind of good to see how big your pipeline is for each department. Um, here's the one that I was really focusing on for, for this conversation is here's what each salesperson has in their pipeline, you know, in their open opportunities for gross profit. So just, just whammo, real quick you can tell. And then here's Here's uh, what a lot of people refer to when they talk about the funnel or the pipeline for their business. But these are all the open opportunities basically put in a format that by sales stage. So how early are you in the process or how late you are uh, in the sales process. So the further on down the sales process you get, you kind of move down the funnel and hopefully by the end, you know, uh, an order you know, spits out, so to speak. So the other cool part about this, I'll just kind of pick on this chart for an example, is you can you can drill in or actually interact with this data. So one of the buttons on these charts is right here, and what it does is it shows the chart on one side, and it shows the data on the other side. So here's that chart. This happens to be a list of all the open opportunities that are in the system. So what I could do is I could say, well, you know, what is Doug working on? And if I click on that, it actually changes this list to only show me Doug's three opportunities. And I'm looking at this, and I'm going, oh, yeah, this first one is the one I think he entered and trained. So he really only has two. You know, I really got to talk to Doug about using CRM more. I could click on Steve's. Um, 
Okay, so Steve had this big, big list, you know, very hard to analyze it. There's just too much on here. So maybe what I could do is you can, you can make a chart of this data, of just Steve's records. So I could say, well, maybe I just want to look at Steve's data by sales stage. So make a chart, and I actually picked up, you know, a bar chart here. So it's giving me a bar chart, again, showing me gross profit of all the opportunities that Steve has in sales stage. So I could say, well, wow, he's got, he's got some over here in sales stage four. They're just about to wrap up. It looks like they've accepted. Let's take a look at them. So he has 15 opportunities that are in activate and transition, sales stage four. Um, I wonder why these deals aren't getting closed. You know, I wonder if I should talk to Steve to see if uh, you know I can help him. You know, finish up the deal. You know, the customer's accepted. You know, is the credit department holding up the credit app? You know, aren't they getting set up in the bag? Well, why aren't we delivering to these customers who've said yes already? So, or maybe Steve just stopped. You know, closing out his opportunities because he's like seeing a lot of open opportunities. Who knows? So the news here is you can interact with this data, right? Analyze it. All right, what else did I want to show you? So I think just the last thing I here to kind of, because I think this is important, is, you know, how does that pipeline come to life? And, and it all has to do with opportunities. So I'm actually going to jump in and just, just for a minute here, show you how the process works. I, I'll just grab one. I think I had a lubricant one that might have been an easy one to work with here. I was playing with this earlier. I want to pull up one that maybe makes a little bit of sense. I think I was playing with this one. So this is what an opportunity looks like in our system. So it's an opportunity, business I'm going after, drives the pipeline. This is where I should be keeping track of, of that in CRM. Again, so it makes my job easier. It's easier to keep track of. And so it's transparent. So the boss doesn't have to keep asking me. I can be out selling. And if he has questions, he can just look in CRM. So Here's an opportunity. It looks like just a lot of raw data, and it is. So this happens to be, you know, lubricants. Uh, I'm, I'm this uh, opportunity happens to be for some lubricants business I'm, I'm trying to get. Um, I'm, I'm uh, introducing the Chevron brand to this customer. This opportunity happens to be for a new share wallet that I'm going after. All right, and and this opportunity happens to be in the needs and solutions stage. So what a salesperson does, they're we want their, them to be outside selling, doing doing their job, and not having to spend a lot of time in CRM. So we try to make this easy. You know, update some numbers here, right? How much do I think this opportunity is worth? Maybe put in a little comment here. You know, where I think this opportunity is at. Maybe like the next step, if you want to put that in there. When do I think it's going to close? And and you know, those are the biggies. And then just as I'm going through the sales process. I'm basically just saying, so if I'm in needs and solutions, what do I need to do? Well, I need to create a proposal, a quote. So I can do that in CRM, or I can do that external to CRM. Maybe I use Word or Excel. So if I did that, and now I'm about to present to the customer, I just answer that question, hit next stage. And now I'm really done with the CRM piece of it, which only took seconds. I really need to be out in front of the customer doing that presentation. So that's all I did was answer the question, hit next stage, and it moves a little flag here, and it now says this opportunity is in the presentation stage. And also down here, it reflected it, you know, in this field. It's just saying I'm in sales stage three. You know, if I if I uh, present to them, and you know, maybe I have to adjust the proposal a little bit, do another presentation. I might stay here for a while, but you know, hopefully at some point they accept. I can just say yes, they've accepted the proposal. I can go to the next stage, and that's where we get to that activate and transition, right? So now. It becomes an internal process, and right, what happens when a customer accepts a proposal? Do you have to finalize the credit app, get them set up in your accounting system? Hopefully, they place the first order, and and when they do place that first order, hopefully, then you would close this out as a win, and this would just drop off your pipeline, and it would become part of your normal normal book of business. And I suppose bad things could happen right along the way. You could have lost this opportunity, and there's a spot for that as well. Right up here, you could close this as a loss, record you know, why you lost it, and again, in that case, it would also drop off your pipeline. So I thought it was important just to kind of share with you um, the way we have basically your pipeline management in CRM. We try to make it as simple as possible, but getting the information is important, but let's just make it easy so the sales team can be all selling. So 
This is the information that was reflected on that dashboard I was showing you earlier. All right, that is sales team transparency. I am going to move on to quotes. So I'm actually just going to, this isn't going to take too long at all. I'm just going to jump into, um, pull up a quote here. And I'll just pull this one up. So I have a quote in the system already. So this quote would have been tied to an opportunity that I was working on. And basically a lot of this data comes right from the opportunity, but I can fill in things like, um, you know, the, the, how long is the, is the proposal valid and what payment terms I'm going to give them. If I'm uh, pushing a certain product line, I can actually have a supplier logo print on, on the quote along with my logo. You know, who am I going to give the quote to? Um, and there's just some sections to put some text in, and ultimately, really, you're just listing a list of products and prices for them. So when you have that all done, uh, we've got a lot of uh, time savers to actually get that information in there. Then you can just go and print this for the customer. So I have a button on there that generates, it actually ends up generating a, a, just a, a viewer, if you will. So this is what a quote could look like. It would have your logo on it. Optionally, it could have a supplier's logo on it. A lot of just generic information about the customer and about you as the salesperson. And then really, it's just a list of products and prices. We also have a spot for a disclaimer on the bottom. Right now it says draft because I haven't finalized this one. As soon as I finalize it or activate it, the draft watermark will go away. I can print this. I can export it to PDF. Um, and then I could email it to the customer. I'd say most of my clients like to hand deliver it because it's part of the presentation, right? It's not all just about price. So that's the quoting feature. Um, like I said, it's been well received. I would say over 75% of my customers, you know, use the quoting feature. Again, they get that consistency. Plus, these quotes are saved in Sierra. So now you have them right tied to the customer when the quote was created. You know, if they start doing business with you, it's very easy for maybe somebody to set this information up. If you have to, you know, set this up in your back office or whatever, you've, you've got it right here. So that is quotes. And right now, I think I'm about right on schedule. So moving on to equipment tracking. Let's get rid of this. I can get rid of that one. Okay, so I'm going to go to a whole separate module in CRM called Equipment Tracking. So let me just give you the, the basic fundamentals here. So the good news is we have you know, probably over half of the information we need to bring the equipment tracking to life. We have your customers. We have the products they're buying. And we have all that good stuff. What, what don't we have? CRM does not have your equipment. So let's just, as, as an example, let's just say we're talking your tank. So you've got to go in, and this is what equipment file looks like. Basically, you give a description, a, a, a number. Um, you can code them to certain categories if you want. So you can have tanks, you can have generators, you can have whatever. And record a little bit more information about each tank. So now, now we've got your accounts, we've got your equipment, we've got you know products, we've got products customers are buying. The last thing we need to do then is tie a tank to a customer. So we do that in what we call the account equipment file. So what this does is it's tying in this account, actually this account, to this piece of equipment. So I'll just pull one up here and you'll see what I'm talking about. Let's grab, uh, um, see that one's already returned. Let's go with this one right here. So here's an account equipment record, and that's all it's really saying is this account has this tank. And that's really all you have to do. I mean, there's a couple other required fields. You have to come up with a transaction type. So did you sell it to them? Did you loan it to them? Did you rent it to them? You, you decide what your transaction types are. And then when did that happen? So that's a start date. And then the end date is if you ever took this equipment back, you would fill that in. So the fact that that end date is not filled in tells me they still have this tank. And then optionally, what you can do is they promise to buy this product from us to put in that tank, and they promise to buy 5,000 gallons a year. So now that I did this, um, there are dashboards that you can analyze, you can look at, to show you who's not meeting their commitment. So 
So it's just a great way. You don't have to do any work except set this up because the system will do all the work. We have your invoice data. We have your customer data. We have your product data. So we have everything we need to help you analyze who, you know, if they promised to buy 5,000 you know, gallons a year and, uh, you know, they only hit 2,000 last year, you know, they were probably maybe not being completely up front when, you, you know, they talked you into giving them a tank. Okay, the other thing that's kind of nice, again, with just being CRM and a database and everything, all this stuff is tied together. So as an example, I'm going to just click right back to Fairview Manufacturing, the account. Remember, about a half hour ago, here's where I kind of started a lot of this, with just looking at this customer. I looked at the order history. Well, another thing I could do is that if I'm pulling up this customer, I can go to this little arrow, and instead of looking at order history, I could say, well, hey, just let me know, show me if they have any equipment out there of ours. And it gives you a nice list, and it shows you all the equipment that they have or have had. So an example of the bottom one, they got something in January of uh, 2011, but either they returned it or we went and took it back on September 12, 2011. So they don't have this one anymore. But they do have these two. So just a great way, you know, if you're analyzing the account, you know, you can look to see if they have any equipment. So that's equipment tracking. All right, station management. Another whole separate module. May not apply to everyone on the call, um, but I'll do my best to just give you a quick high level. So ultimately what you do here is you set up a record in the system for each, uh, I'll say each facility, each station. It could be a card lock location, a gas station, a convenience center. I mean, use your imagination. You can set this up for just about, about anything that you want, but it was designed for a convenience store. So I'll just open one up, and we, we may have gotten carried away with all the different things you might want to track for a particular station, but just about every single thing in here is optional. So I'll, I'm not going to bore you with everything on here, but as an example, you can keep track of, you know, the point of sale that they have. You know, what, what are they using at that station? Because you know, if you service that, maybe you need to know that. Um, as I scroll down a little bit, there's all kinds of things you can keep track of about the building. You know, from the roof to the square footage to the security system to the heat source. Again, if you're servicing some of this or have to help them, you know, it might be great just to have all of this in one place. One of the things I find, you know, when I go through this with organizations, I find out this information is scattered in about three or four places, many, uh, many times duplicated or triplicated throughout an organization. Because this person takes care of compliance. This is the service guy. This guy is in charge of this. And everybody has this information you know, all over the place. So if you put it in CRM, it's all in one spot. Um, I'm just going to kind of scroll down and you'll kind of get a sense. I could, I could tie this station to an account in my system if I wanted to do that. I could keep track of any other retail strategies that this station happens to have going on. So, you know, this particular, you know, convenience store has a car wash and it has a subway hook to it. Um, if there's any documents that I want to store in here, maybe there's some contracts that were involved um, that you need to you know, file. Well, why not put them right here, right? It's all connected. Any information about the canopies that are there, the signage, uh, the pumps, so obviously the things that are above the ground, right? The make, the model, the product, the pump type, how many of those you have, and then what's underground, the tanks. And then any other equipment that you can, you can use your imagination, right? If you want to keep track of the hot dog roller, the air conditioner unit, you know, the make, the model, all that kind of good stuff, you can do that here as well. And also, I'm sure this is big in just about every state. I know in Wisconsin it's big. There's a lot of compliance things that go on, you know, when you're talking about tanks and whatnot. So you can set up some compliance things that you have to do quarterly, annually, you know, every three years. Um, you set them up, put in the due date, and the system will let you know every month. You just get a list of what's due this month, and you go out and you know, do those compliance items. I've seen folks get real creative with this just because it's labeled compliance items doesn't mean that's what you have to put in here. I've seen clients of mine put in their preventive maintenance stuff in here. It just seemed like the right place for them to do it. So even though it's not a compliance item, they just want to go do something once a year at each station, so preventive maintenance on something, um, or whatever they want. You can put whatever you want in here, and, and it'll leave it a due date, and, and then just, you know, Obviously, access those each month and go address them and mark them complete and create another one for a year from now. So, 
why was this? Obviously, they get all this information stored in one spot. Maybe we talked about compliance items. If I did uh, service these stations, one of the things that you know, vanilla CRM has, and obviously our system has it as well, is this concept of activities. So an activity can be a task that you can assign to somebody and keep track of it in CRM, and then when it's done, you can mark it complete and, and write down what you did. Well, you can, you can attach a task to this station, assign it to maybe the, the service guy who's got to go you know, pick something, and then when he's done, he'd mark it complete, and you would have nice history of all the work that's been done at this station. Plus, it's a nice way to make sure you didn't forget to do anything, right? Because you can look at all your open tasks and, and then make sure you go get them done. So a lot of cool ways people have uh, been using station management um, within our system. All right, so that's station management. Chad, I'm going to interrupt one more time just to ask if uh, any questions before I uh, move on. Nope, there's, uh, everything's handled so far, Steve. And uh, I just want to remind anybody, if you do have questions, feel free to put those in your the question pane, and we'll address those continuously as we go. All right. I'm going to pick up a notch because I'm a couple minutes behind and I want to make sure I get at the last three topics. Um, okay, fuel price notification. It's a very simple but, but has uh, saved a lot of time for some of our clients. So I'll just kind of show you how you set this up for a particular customer. So I'm going to go pull up that payments account again. And again, this has to do with sending fuel prices to customers each day. And remember, going into this, this is not an accounting system. So for some of our clients, this doesn't work because their customers expect like freight and taxes and everything on his email, and our system just isn't that sophisticated. We pretty much take a base price you enter each day for each product, and then at the account level or the customer level, you go in and you say, this customer wants to get the fuel price notifications. And they want the price of supernova and un unleaded. And by the way, we take our base price and we add 12 cents to the supernova price and we add 6 cents to the unleaded price to come up with the number that we're going to send to them in an email. And we work with you on the email format that goes out we know with your company name on it and then these prices, usually some contact information on there, you know, who to call, place an order. So this is what you do at the account level. You say, yes, they want to get the price notification, and you set up each product that they want to get prices for. And then you go to the contacts, the people at that company, and I'll just pull up one of these here. So I think Jim is coded to get the email. So there might be two or three people at Fairview Manufacturing who want to get the email, the, the, the fuel prices each day. Um, I don't know why this is taking so long to load right now. I just clicked over to pull up Jim here. It should just pop him right up here. All right, I guess we're not going to see Jim right there. I'm going to go back and just tell him. There he is. Patient Steve. So here's Jim Fairview, who works at Fairview Manufacturing, and he's coded to yes, get that email. And again, I could code as many contacts as I want for Fairview Manufacturing to get that email. And then what's usually one person in the organization with a backup, usually there's a backup person involved, what they do each day is they go in to this fuel product pricing screen. And I'm not going to start one from scratch, I'll just open one up that's here already. But basically what they do is once we have your product set up, this would list your products. And you basically just type in the base price for unleaded, in this case, the diesel and super no lead. And after you've entered the base prices, you hit this send notification button. And then and that's when the magic happens, right? It takes this number, looks at all the customers, looks at all three of these numbers, looks at all the customers who want to get the fuel price notification for specific products, does the math, creates an email, and you know a click of one button here could send out basically hundreds of emails. Um, so that's how that works. I have seen people get real creative with this as well. Um, I know the company I worked for for many years, this, this particular option would never work for us with uh, these three products because we pulled from multiple places, maybe three or four racks or terminals. So you might have four or five unleaded base prices to enter each day, right? Maybe three or four diesel or super no lead or whatever. 
So we can be very creative to make this work, and we've done it for enough clients, um, but it, it will not um, figure out taxes. We just don't have all the taxes in CRM. That's more of an accounting thing. So if, if you need a, a drop delivered price in that email, then the dual price notification probably won't work for you. All right. Lastly, before the iPad app is uh, just one last dashboard to show you, and it's that territory management. I'll do this as quick as I possibly can. So again, this is just a way to plot things on a map. I have a couple options. I'll just do a couple real quick. I could say something like, you know, I'm going to be in Madison, Wisconsin. Show me on a map all of my customers or leads that are near Madison, Wisconsin. And just like that, there they are. So here's a list of them, and here they are on a map. So if, if I'm going to be, you know, I don't know, maybe I was going to be visiting somebody down there, you know, a friend or something. I thought, well, while I'm down there, maybe I'll see if I, you know, I can stop in any customers. So if I hover over the pins, it actually shows me, you know, who they are. And if I want to, I can click on their name, and it opens up that that account screen that I've been showing you throughout the day. It just jumps me right to I can analyze their order history, you know, look at their customers, see if I have any open activities, see if any, I have any open opportunities with them, you know, what's been going on with this client. And then I close it out, get back here. Maybe I decide to call them, schedule an appointment with them, you know, and I could do that for, for all of these, all of these pins. Um, there are a couple other options on here. I'll just show you just one more. But if you know you're going to be visiting a customer and you thought, well, who else is in that area? So I could go to my famous Fairview again, if I can spell. Do a quick search for Fairview. There they are. Highlight them and hit OK. And say, show me on a map everybody within 20 miles of Fairview Manufacturing. So the system knows where Fairview Manufacturing is. There must be one of these in the. OK, so there's Fairview. These are all my customers near Fairview. If I'm going to drive into the city, right, maybe I could stop and talk to this person, talk, you know, stop and talk to this person. So anyway, it's just to help you plan your trip, make you, again, be a little bit more efficient. OK. I think that might be it. I think I'm ready for the iPad app. I've got to get it. I've got to get it set up here. So I need about 15 seconds. My mirroring going. I think I'm good there. All right. So what I'm going to do here is show you on my PC my iPad. Okay, so hopefully you guys are seeing my iPad. So it looks like you are. All right, good. So this is a little bit tough, tougher than you think because I'm actually going to try to point with my mouse, but I've got to hold my iPad in my hand to tap on that. So I'm just going to tap on that little icon, which, are, which is our, our app for CRM. And it's going to open up the app. And remember the concept of this is I don't need to be connected to the Internet. I can be offline and I can do all this. So as fast as you can open up your iPad, tap that app, I'm in. So over here I see I've got about seven or eight minutes yet as we're winding down here. Um, this is the home page. I'll use my mouse just to kind of show you. These gears actually let you control what charts you want to see on your home page and what numbers you want to see here. I just have my figured with a figured with some gross profit revenue charts and Looks like I was interested in analyzing my opportunities. So here's my pipeline information. These are some of the activities that I have in CRM right now. We also have a global search. I can search for just about anything right here. And then along the bottom are all the other things that I could do. I could, I could uh, right now I'm at home. I could go into that territory management, kind of the same thing that I had on, uh, on CRM, but uh, it's here on your iPad. I could go into my accounts, contacts, opportunities, leads. I'm just going to kind of use my finger now, and I'm just kind of sliding that bar over to show you what else is here. I could look at all my activities. Um, if you haven't seen enough dashboards, there's a whole other page. You can configure up to four more dashboards to analyze more numbers. A very important button here, you want to sync at least once a day. So when you are connected to the Internet, you want to synchronize. And what does that do? It takes all your hard work that you did on your iPad and pushes it up to CRM and takes everything that's new in CRM and pushes it down to your iPad. We talked about your invoice data getting pushed to CRM every night. You're going to want that down to your iPad, you know, every day. So we recommend syncing usually first thing in the morning, 
and maybe you know middle of the day if you've done a lot of work. All right. So maybe just for now, I'll uh, I'll just go into accounts because I spent a lot of time there. So I'm just going to tap on accounts. And again, I I could be offline, anywhere, anywhere, um, and I could hit search. So I'm just going to tap. This, search. this is just a list of all my customers. It shows me how many I have, how many are actually customers, how many are prospects. So just, just to give you some analytics here. Um, but I'll click on the search. You can almost guess who I'm going to search for. So I'll do that. And then I'm just going to tap on Fairview Manufacturing on my iPad. So what you're going to notice is, you know, up the top, you know, I'm the owner of this account. Here's the account number. All of this on the left is all of that main customer information. As I kind of scroll up, this is all the stuff I would have seen in CRM. And then over on the right, I control what's on the right-hand side of the screen by the options down here again. So again, what could I do? I could tap on order history. So I'm I'm in my car. You know, I just pulled into Fairview Manufacturing. When's the last time they bought? You know, how much did they pay? How much did they buy? You know, this is this is some of the stuff they've been doing. Um, I could look at any open activities that we have for them. I could look at. I'm just going to scroll around and see what else we have here. You know, I could look at the contacts. Maybe I forgot the three people who work there. Who are they again? You know, quick contacts. Oh, there's oh, four of them. Yeah, that's right. There's Jim and Mabel and Melissa, and then they just hired this Robert guy. Okay, got it. Right? Um, do I have any? Um, Competitor share wallet I want to record. I want to put them on a map. Um, do I have any notes? I could just look at the notes that I've captured from this account and see, you know, see them in there. Any closed activities? I don't think I have any closed activities. So the really probably the important thing when you're analyzing mobile um, is we've seen this with other clients and, and, and other companies who've gotten CRM and you know they, they you know they, they get mobile. A lot of the mobile that's out there right now is just to view. That's changing, but right now it's just to view. So we've heard loud and clear from our clients. That's why we developed our own. So you'll see up on top here, as I'm analyzing fear of manufacturing, right here on my iPad, I could add an activity. So I just stopped in, made a sales call. I could record that sales call. As soon as I get back out into my car, save it, I'm done. When I think it's going to be in CRM, I don't have to write stuff down. I don't have to record it later. I can just do it quick. I could add a note. I could create an opportunity. I could add another contact. Maybe I just met somebody new. I throw them in there. You know, I could bring my iPad in and do it right in front of them. Um, I could add some competitor share a wallet here if I wanted to. Also, all those things that I can add, I can also maintain. So I could pull up an opportunity. So let's actually find some of these opportunities that we had for him. So there's opportunities. I'm just going to click on this opportunity, and I don't remember which one I was playing with before, but I'll just grab one. Just tapping on that fourth one there. And it's going to jump me on my iPad from the account screen to the opportunity screen. And we tried to make it look as close as possible. The information over here on the left is the basic information about the opportunity. These are the stages. You answer a question, hit next stage. You can update the brand you're pushing, the opportunity type. I can scroll down here on the left, update these important things. I guess I made a close date, how much revenue this is worth. You know, do this. Hit the save button. You know, at the end of the day, I do a sync, and all this information is up in CRM, transparent to everybody. But it was so easy for me to do. So easy for me to add a note, add an activity, update an opportunity, qualify a lead. You know, all about 95% of what a salesperson does in the field, you can do on our iPad app. I would say the one thing that um, actually a lot of our customers said they didn't need it. That's why we didn't take the effort because it's a fairly complicated uh, module. Is quotes. You can't. You can look at a quote. But you can actually uh, generate and create and maintain quotes on your iPad. But everything else is fair game. So I think, Chad, that I am about uh, a minute to go, which i got to turn the last minute back to you. So I am going to fire up the PowerPoint slide. And I'm going to turn it back to you, Chad. Thanks a lot, Steve. Really appreciate that. Uh, and uh, you know. One o'clock on the nose here, uh, Central Time Zone, and want to thank everybody for participating today. Want to remind you that we will be sending you an email uh, follow up with this uh, containing the recorded version. So feel free to watch that again if you want to replay anything. Feel free to share that with others in your office, 
And you know, really the, the best way to see a deeper dive of this, even though it was an hour, Steve, believe it or not, covered a lot of information in, in what is a short amount of time. With a deep dive, we can really get into the challenges that you're experiencing personally. Um, you can talk vanilla CRM. So any of those questions, you can direct that to Kevin Brown. Uh, he's more than happy to, to dig in and, and to tell you more about the product uh, from the desktop version to the iPad version. So once again, thank you very much for uh, joining us today. We appreciate it, and have a great day.